Hello, everybody. Thank you for coming to my uh, my webinar. Um, we're talking about math and mindset for the competition and beyond. Um, just a little bit about what this talk is going to be about. I, you know, when the opportunity came up to give a talk at one of these webinars, I figured that probably a majority of other people giving talks would be focusing on things like particular, let's say, particular strategies for. Um, handling problems, just maybe like general math type things. And I thought that it would be a good opportunity now to talk about maybe some non-math related things for the competition. That is to say, ways to just be in the right mindset and if you get a little bit stressed out to handle it, but also to take this opportunity because, you know, eventually, in, we'll, as I'm not sure exactly what years people are in, you're probably in like these kind of approaching the transition years into, uh, you know, high school to, to university, having a good grasp on a good mindset and ways to handle yourselves in stressful situations, I can like promise you goes a long way. So I really just want to uh, address these things right, right now and today. Um, a couple of things about the talk, I'm going to just be throwing some uh, ideas at, at you. I, I decided not to include a lot of um, hard evidence in the, in the sense of here are a bunch of um, experiments that were done and such. I just want it to be this to be a little more of a conversation. And there will be opportunities for me to uh, reach out to you all and get your uh, opinions on things. And um, when that time comes and I ask you questions, by all means, uh, if you want to unmute yourself and answer, I would very much like that. I'm not going to strictly enforce it, but that would be pretty pretty good. Um, someone is trying to get in. Let me let them in. So awesome. Um, I'm going to begin uh, the talk. So uh, math and mindset. Oh, someone trying to get in. For the competition and beyond. So my name is Christopher Mahadio. A bit of, you know, the, uh, the fast and dirty. I'm a PhD student, Department of Mathematics and Statistics at the University of Saskatchewan. So a bit of an overview. What am I going to talk to you about today? Roughly speaking, kind of four points that I want to talk about. I want to start with a bit about me. I think that it's important to you guys to know where I'm coming from, you know, uh, uh, why I'm talking about th these things, and because I'm going to make some relevant anecdotes when the time comes. And it will just make it make a lot more sense if you know a little bit about me. Um, sorry, I don't know if you the participant list. I'm trying to deal with this right now. Um, <clears throat> the first topic is going to be growth mindsets which is really about trying to think of things in such a way that we are focusing on our, our ability to, to grow as people, as learners. Then we're going to talk about stress uh, reappraisal, which is another way of thinking about handling stressful situations. And to end it off, I just want to talk about some fun little strategies that you can have going forward into the, to the, to the contest and, again, to take into future stressful situations with the particular intention that I'm thinking about things like examinations. Um, so about me. So first, some education related things. So I have a bachelor's degree in mathematics and physics with a minor in French from the University of Toronto. Uh, I have a master's degree in mathematics from the University of Toronto. And as mentioned, I am uh, pursuing a PhD at the moment in mathematics. Um, I say this because I want you to, to know that I am definitely in a position to be able to talk about mathematics and such to you, and to, so that you understand that I have been through some of what you can only assume is very rough courses and such in my life. <laughs> um, some non-education things about me. Uh, I actually have a lot of teaching experience through tutoring. Uh, where am I right now? I am in Saskatoon, Saskatchewan, and it is cold and snowy. Unfortunately. Um, so yeah, I have a lot of teaching experience uh, in the form of tutoring, being a teaching assistant, and being a lecturer. I mentioned this because this is kind of now like a the other side of the coin. I've been the stressed student who's like freaking out about what's going on, but I've also been in the teacher's position to see people and try to understand how to, to help them out. Um, just some like fun facts about me. I speak three languages, English, French, and Japanese. I hope that me saying Japanese makes everyone go, what the heck? Because yeah, why not? 
and uh, some things I do in my leisure time, board games, swing dancing, and swimming. Again, lots of these are mentioned as they will come up anecdotally as I uh, explain things. So I want to start with the idea of growth mindset. So, you know, in, in kind of a, a one phrase, what is growth mindset? It's that your brain can grow. And maybe we're at this point kind of like, yeah, like, you know, the people grow. That's how things happen. But, um, you know, the point is that, you know, practicing and learning new things, it physically changes the brain. And this is true for not just children, you know, teens like yourselves, adults like me, adults that are adultier than me. Everybody has the ability to change their brain through practicing and learning new things. Um, the next kind of aspect of this growth mindset is that intelligence and skills can be developed. You're not fixed with what you know. If you want something, it is attainable. How is it attainable? Well, you can improve yourself through practice and good strategies. You know, to to put some example on what I'm what I mean, I mentioned that I enjoy swimming, and I started swimming maybe eight years ago. And it started off with my friend inviting me to go mess around at the the public pool. It was open. We splashed around, jumped on the diving boards, and towards the end, he uh, decided he would do a couple laps. And I watched him swim, and I was like, "He's doing pretty well." I do not know how many feet I can swim. I don't, I don't off the top of my head know. But uh, I saw this and I was like, you know what? Swimming was fun. This was like pretty good exercise. I want to learn how to swim. So I had my friend teach me how to do the breaststroke. And the first couple times I did it, it took me embarrassingly long to do 100 meters. I can't tell you because I forgot, but it was embarrassingly long. And it felt extra bad because I was watching my friend who looked like a fish in the water, just cutting right through. And, you know, it felt kind of bad. It felt like I was not going to get anywhere. But, you know, it was about the, the mindset. If I had the mindset of my friend is like a fish and I will never swim better than him, then I never would. But what I realized is, you know, my friend has been swimming for many years. He has practice. I'm new at this. I need to practice. So every day I went swimming, it was always, let's try to shave off one second. I try to kick a little bit harder. And it's those small things that add up to developing skills. Now, I dare say we can argue that the last two of these points are fairly straightforward. Like, yeah, the skills can be, be developed. Obviously, you need to practice to improve. But maybe the brain changing is not so obvious. I'm not here to teach you neuroscience, but I will comment briefly on that. And, you know, the comment is that the brain is a muscle. Inside the brain are billions of nerve cells called neurons. And connecting the neurons is a complex network. The way that we think and solve problems and do things, it's all about communication between these neurons. And in the same way that lifting weights builds muscle, although I could not tell you the exact details of that, as I, again, am not a, like a, kinesiology person, um, learning improves the brain by multiplying and strengthening these connections. So here now, these three points, they all should kind of make a certain amount of sense. But I've not, I've not super explained this idea of growth mindset yet. But I want to, maybe we're, we're, we're sitting here right now and we're kind of like, I don't, like I, I don't really know, like, you know, like some people are, are just smart, right? You know, some people are just naturally better. But I implore you to, to think that that's just a way of thinking. That's what's called the fixed mindset. There is a way to outgrow that mindset. And it's just about thinking a little bit differently. You know, the fixed mindset might say something like, I want to avoid challenge. You know, difficult things are hard. I might fail. What if I can't do it? You know. You know, what if I can't swim? You know, what what if I'm not going to uh, make the basketball team, right? That's that fixed mindset of like, you are in a static position. But the growth mindset is about embracing that challenge. That challenge is how you're going to improve. 
um, the fixed mindset might think that effort is fruitless, right? The, gosh, I'm never going to be better than this guy. He He's just brilliant. He He's a genius. This test is impossible. I'll never learn how to bake delicious bread. But the growth mindset is all about effort is necessary, right? Things, this, this does not mean that you will obtain your goal immediately. It's about making slow progress towards it and acknowledging that the steps you take forward will eventually get you there. A part of these steps is learning from other people. So a fixed mindset might reject criticism. Somebody says, I think you should do, do this. That might be a little bit better. And you just, nope, what I have is perfect. This is all I need. That's, that's fixed. A growth mindset listens to what someone says and thinks about how it can change what they're doing, right? The kind of big picture here is that, obviously kind of in the words fixed and growth is that, you know, the fixed mindset is that things are fixed. You are static. Your intelligence has no ability to change, but the growth mindset is telling you that you can develop it. It's going to take work, but it can be developed. So I'm going to take a, a, a hot second and just say, you know, I've, I've talked about, you know, intelligence is fixed, intelligence can develop, embracing, you know, growth and practice. Does anyone, anybody who wishes to unmute their mic and just throw an idea out at me? What kind of things can we do to develop a growth mindset? You can also feel free to throw it into the chat. So I'm just going to like pause for like 20 seconds. If anyone has ideas, feel free to unmute, shout it out, type it in the chat. What can we do to change our mindsets? Doing things is great, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, mean, I will, of course, argue questioning is good, but definitely following through on those questions is, is great. Okay. Oh, oh. Even better. Um, okay, so uh, what can we do? Oh, I got a bunch. Uh, embrace success instead of defeat. Acknowledge and embrace imperfections. That's great. Challenges, opportunities, different tactics. Wonderful. Well, like maybe you guys should be be teaching me this because this is a lot more than I could think of. Um, no, of course there are many ways, and I, I want to highlight a couple. Some that are maybe going to be less immediately <laughs> important and some that are that I want to focus on right now. So one important thing is to kind of, as was uh, proposed by uh, Brendan here, is to focus, Brendan and perhaps uh, Jonathan, was to focus on learning over success and failure. Now, I'll be the first to admit that this is hard for me to say to a student. Because what's, what's student life like? Like, you know, to get to the next step, it always feels like you're governed by some amount of success, right? You have to pass classes to get to the next grade, to get into university, to get into your program. It feels hard for me to say to you, don't worry about learning, just focus on, sorry, don't worry about like passing, just focus on learning. Um, I, if you do not feel like, like that, then that is wonderful. Uh, I tell you that I had a, co a very difficult course in my undergrad. And one of the, the upper year students uh, looked at me and said, this course was really easy once I stopped caring about my mark. And I was having such a difficult time in this course that I wanted to strangle this person. So I can understand that this might be a difficult one to, to grasp as, as, a, as a student. If you can grasp it, that's great. But this isn't going to be one that I'm going to focus on. Another thing we can do is try to recast our thoughts, right? The way that we think about things, the way that we think about ourselves and other people, we can change that process. You know, when I say focus on learning and over success and failure, that's like our actual doing. Recasting our thoughts, you know, praising process over outcome, that's more about reflection. You know, reflecting on effort, strategy, and progress rather than the outcome. Another potential thing we can do is, as kind of was mentioned above, is to challenge oneself. You know, stepping outside of your comfort zone into something more difficult and somewhat unknown, it can be very fruitful. I will digress on another story as I did an exchange to Japan um, to study some Japanese language. And there were three levels of courses, a beginner, intermediate, and advanced. My placement test put me in the intermediate, but they 
some things happened and the person teaching intermediate was not able to stay. So they only offered beginner or advanced. I had a choice of taking the easy course that I knew everything about or really taking the hard course. And I chose the hard course and I spent every night just cramming words into my head, studying uh, grammar and you know, practicing how to write the characters. And it was hard. I was born in Canada. It was very difficult, but I really learned a lot from it. It was horrendously stressful, but stepping into that just past what I knew really, I really got a lot out of that course. But this is again, not what I'm going to focus on. Um, what I'd like to focus on is this middle one to, oops, obviously forgot the word zone there, is to recast your, your thoughts. So I wanna talk about praise for a second. And it's hard to be exact, like what do I mean by praise when I say this? So I'm gonna kind of split, split praise into like two ways, kind of the praise of others and the praise of the self. When I say praise of others, I mean, how do we think about the accolades of others? What we should not do is praise the intelligence or talents of others. And this is in the sense of comparing it to ourselves, right? Statements like, he's smarter than me, or she's naturally talented, that's doing nothing for us. That's like limiting ourselves. That is just us limiting ourselves and saying that, well, he's smarter than me, so I'll never be able to get up to, she's natural talent, I don't have that talent, right? We want to just like strike that out. Exactly, we, we might want to, to complement these in, in different ways. Uh, you know, but the important thing to remember is that different people are at different stages of progress. You know, he's, you know, somebody might be farther ahead of you somewhere, but it does not mean that they're smarter. Somebody might be really good at skiing and you're kind of bad, but they're just farther along than you are. That's kind of the idea of praising other people. This is our perceptions of the accolades of others. What about the accolades of ourselves? Again, we have to kind of, this is the like, look at myself in a mirror and like, you know, what, what, what am I seeing? Again, I wanna start with don't praise intelligence or, or talents, right? But also kind of praise in the, the bad way. It's not that I did great because I'm smart or I did bad because I'm dumb, right? You wanna acknowledge the work that you put into it. Success or failure, work put in is work put in. And you wanna always recognize that you have made progress. Even if you're not immediately good at something, you want to acknowledge that you put time in. Now, of course, I got to take a step back and say, if you did not put time into something, obviously you cannot say, ah, oh, damn it. I just, you know, making my way there. Growth mindset goes hand in hand with effort. And so, you know, instead of saying something like, ah, oh, God, I, you know, I suck at trig or factoring is easy. Like, no, that, that, that's bad. That, that's limiting our, our thoughts for the future, right? Trigonometry has it's just been challenging. I'm going to overcome it. It's just challenging right now. And factoring isn't easy. I spent time learning it and practicing it. The other kind, the kind of big word as well that gets thrown around with self-praise is the word yet. Like, yet is powerful. There, there's possibility. You are on a path to the future. It's not, I can't do it. It's... I can't do it yet, right? So, you know, we're, we're thinking about ways to, to reword what we're thinking within ourselves to suggest that we have room to grow and that we can grow. So I wanna just look at a couple of examples. Again, if you wanna type it out, type out what, uh, uh, what comes up or unmute yourself and talk, that's great as well. So here I have this idea. So some people are naturally skilled at math. I am not one of them. How, how might we word this another way? To, to think more so about the idea of like, you know, people being able to grow, focusing on things that have been done. I welcome either, again, I welcome either the chat or unmute yourself and say hello. There, there are no correct answers. Yeah, th this is this is a great one. I should practice and put more put in more effort. Yeah, you know, you acknowledge that. It, and what what I like here is that it's the word more. It's not that I should practice. It's I've been practicing, but I got to step it up a little bit. And sometimes you just have to do that. Um, what did I have for this one? For this one, I had I didn't start with talents. 
I have learned it all. Let me tell you, stop procrastinating. That 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 could be a talk on its own. <laughs> um, I will never get an A in this class. How might I change this statement into something that suggests that I can grow? I've not tried hard enough is great. I still have work to do. That that's also very good. What did I say? I had I'm dissatisfied with my current efforts. But again, you know, I I I like words like you know, not tried hard enough. That means that you have put the effort in. Um, let's let's throw out a, a couple more. If I don't try, I will fail. <laughs> I should try. All right, fair. If I failed, then I tried. That's also great. Um, to me, uh, failures are just opportunities, right? You know, when when you fail at something, you you learn. Um, I have one more of these. Uh, I'm not good at calculus. Uh, this is not a me statement. I am actually pretty good at calculus, but uh, how when I change this phrase? I am not good at calculus. <laughs> we should all practice more integration. No, th th this is good, right? I should put more practice in. Um, you know, I've just not learned how to do cal calculus yet, right? The kind of idea, again, that, you know, there are still steps that have to be taken. So, so yeah, so, okay. So this was growth mindset. And, you know, maybe at this point you're kind of like, okay, you know, Chris, what the heck are you talking about? Um, this is supposed to be about, you know, writing these math contests. And what I'm trying to get at with this aspect is this is like the preparation beforehand. This is when you are, you know, are spending your time studying, preparing, and, you know, your time in classrooms, getting ready for anything. You know, preparing your mind beforehand is such a big part of being ready in the moment. And I think that this is a very small thing. I'm not. I'm not asking you to to believe in any crazy pseudoscience here. All I'm just saying is, believe that you can take steps to improve. When it comes to even like just just writing, you see, um, uh, uh, you see a question. You're not sure. All right, I'll think about this, and I'm gonna come back to you. We're not. We're not done yet. Yet. So, okay, that was this idea of growth mindset. Again, your brain can grow. The other kind of side of things that I want to talk about is uh, stress reappraisal. And so if growth mindset was kind of the pre preparation beforehand, this is a little bit the preparation of in the moment, right? And if I had to sum things up again, like I summed up uh, your brain can grow for stress reappraisal, it's that, you know, make your stress work for you. Uh, I see that I might have messed up my next slide, but that's fine. Um, so, you know, what am I getting? Like, stress sounds horrible. Stress is the worst. But there are ways that we can work around stress. And I didn't make these multiple points. Uh, apologies. But so, okay, you know, stress. Stress induces changes in our in our body, right? You know, we get that weird, unsettled feeling, like the butterflies in the stomach, the sudden kind of like fight or flight uh, instinct. But it's worth asking, is this stuff bad? And I, I argue that it's hard to tell sometimes in a non-active environment. By that I mean when you're sitting and writing a test, is it easy to tell if you're a bit like if, you know, if the jitters are working for or against you? It's hard to say. So I'd like to implore us to have a little thought experiment. Um, I dare say stress has the potential to be good. Let's consider this following thought experiment. Imagine that you're a skier descending a tall mountain along a steep icy slope. Kind of like Santa Claus over here in the picture. Um, how do you feel? Like if you're, you're jetting down at some crazy speed. Uh, yes, the, these ideas of like uh, arousal reappraisal and stuff are kind of 
the the things that will be be gotten at here. But uh, the point is, you you're you're descending this tall, steep, icy slope. You can imagine that that in that moment, there's a bit of a bit of stress, right? But it's good to know what is that stress doing? Like, what is the purpose of it? And like, you know, if you think about in this moment of flying sixty kilometers down a hill covered in ice with trees everywhere, that stress is your body and mind acting together. It's trying to assess and handle the situation. This is different than when you're sitting and you're writing a, a test. It's not clear that your body and mind are trying to deal with what's going on. But when you're flying down a slope like a crazy person, it's a little bit more clear. Um, okay, so how can we handle this stress? So there are two ways that we can handle stress, right? We can kind of roll with it. We can we can take it as excitement, right? You know, our body is ready. We are we are ready to succeed at what's going to to happen. These these you know uh, uh, the shaking, the heart pumping. It's all getting our senses ready to deal with it. That's this idea that stress is excitement. This like uh, anxiety is excitement. The other side of this is is fear. That, that the body is realizing that we're in a position where we can't handle what's about to happen, and it doesn't know what to do. And they're very much two sides of a coin. So, but, you know, the skiing thing is kind of, um, you know, is, is this one example. Can we think of... So I encourage, so let's, let's throw some ideas out. What are some other experiences that are, where you're not really sure if it's like fear or excitement? Like, I'm going to throw another one at you. If you've ever been on like a big roller coaster and it's like that, that dip right over the top when you do the loop-the-loop, -loop, like it's, it's crazy, it's exciting, but there's also like, oh my God, am I going to die? I hope this doesn't fly off the edge. And it's that excitement, that, that weird kind of, am I afraid? Am I happy? What's going on? Any any thoughts of uh, experiences that are kind of a little bit frightening, a little bit exciting? Again, I'll give you a, a moment to unmute and talk or type in the chat while I have a sip of water. Hunting. Hunting is an interesting one. I could definitely see that. Um, I could definitely picture that. I've never hunted before, so I'm not sure, but uh, the... the the need to like be be quick and silent like oh that's yeah the, all you know all great um all great examples um so okay so you know stress i'm i'm trying to get to get at that that stress has the potential to be good right but like 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 how so okay i mentioned stress induces these changes but to kind of highlight exactly what I was getting at, these changes aren't necessarily bad. Yeah, honestly, skiing. I will actually pause for a hot moment now that I think about it. You know, as I'm about to talk about and say stress can, can be good, there's an understanding that I don't mean all the time, right? In the same sense that growth mindset was related to your effort and preparedness, this is the same thing with stress. Um, just because you have a mindset of, yeah, it's all going to be good and fine, that does not, not necessarily mean it is, unless something has been put into it as well. So let me share a story with you about skiing. I have skied one or two times in my life, and they were on small hills. And I thought that I could handle a bigger hill. So I went to the top of the hill with my friend, and this was a very tall hill on the side of a mountain. And I thought that I could handle it. And as soon as I looked down, like I felt like it beating in my heart, like, oh, oh my gosh, this is going to happen. And I tried, and then I wiped out a couple times, and I wiped out, and I wiped out, and I realized that I was just not ready for this. Uh, so there's definitely an aspect of understanding. If that anxiety is truly that sense of fear of you truly can't do it, or if it's just that blurred line of excitement. I say this because I don't want you to leave here and say I can go do anything because Chris told me I could. So um, I said stress is good. So what exactly do I mean? Well, stress, this anxiety, adrenaline, that, that's what 
starts you getting agitated. That's what's allowing you to move and think quickly. You know, when you're on the ski hill, it makes more sense. You're trying to dodge trees. You're trying not to wipe out. Sitting at a test is maybe not as clear. The heart rate goes up. Blood is pumping. Oxygen is getting where it needs to be. The heavy breathing, oxygen is moving everywhere. You're trying to fill your lungs back up. Right? These, these, these things that maybe seem bad in a sitting down and writing a test kind of moment, when we just rethink about it, it makes sense. You know, it's our body trying to be in a position to handle anything. And it's definitely skirting a line. I'm totally not, not saying it's going to be no problem. You're just going to, you know, uh, whip around and totally be cool with everything. You know, things come with a bit of time and understanding. So, uh, so okay, what is this? What is the principle of what? Um, <laughs> adrenaline is probably good when you need to fight people or kill animals. We're mainly thinking about writing, like, math competitions and further examinations in your educational career. Um, okay, so what's the idea of stress uh, reappraisal? So you know the emotions that you feel, combination of physiology, like, like what's happening in your body and what's happening in your mind. And the point is that we're trying to think differently. If you think differently about that stress, that will change how you feel. An important caveat to this is that does not get rid of some of these feelings. Just because you, you are thinking like, yeah, all right, this is good. It doesn't get rid of anxiety. This isn't going to rid you of, of whatever shackles are on you. It's just going to channel that into something more positive. I want you to think that it's more of a change in perspective. Right. So I have said these things. So, you know, maybe I have some crazy way, uh, like a, a 10 point system for how to do this, but truthfully, I don't. And I think it boils down to just three simple words. I am excited. In these moments when you are sitting there at a test and you're like, oh my God, what's going on? When you're about to go in front of the bar and sing karaoke, oh my gosh, what's going on? When, when, when you're dancing with your crush for the first time at the dance, oh my God, what's going on? It's in those moments that you want to say, I am excited. This feeling is excitement. Is it guaranteed to work? I'm not here to guarantee you, uh, you anything. But you know, repeating and thinking about this idea is going to put you in a mindset. And I want to just backpedal for um, a second and say, you know, you might be sitting here thinking that usually when somebody talks about handling anxiety, uh, their, their usual go-to things are just going to be just take some breaths, relax, calm down, be cool, have a tea, do some yoga, meditate, walk on the beach, and that's also totally fine. What I'm trying to get at with this is that there's another way. It's not always easy to go from crazy anxiety to calm emotion, right? There is, roughly speaking, this little chart. And uh, roughly speaking, whoop, you know, the usual go-to is to take anxiety into being calm. And if you can do that, that's great. What I'm trying to get at here is that if you can't, there's another path. It's to, rather than get rid of those mechanisms in your body that are causing everything to make uh, brain go fast, to quote Alex in the chat, it's to just channel that into a positive aspect. So, okay, this was stress reappraisal, right? So why did I talk about this? This is, again, a, like, in-the-moment kind of thing. An in-the-moment strategy, right? The, the growth mindset was beforehand. This is when you're sitting there doing, doing the contest, and you're like, oh, okay, you know, I'm really trying to do well. It's, it, nope, you know, this is a big moment. I'm excited. This is cool. This is awesome. I'm writing this. It's great. When you're you know, when you're playing a sport, you know, you're, you're uh, playing baseball, you're up to bat, bases are, bases are loaded, you know, this is my chance. I'm here, I'm exciting, let's do this, right? I want you to, to take from this idea that 
any moment when you are a little bit panicked, think about if you have prepared for it. If you have prepared, then you can just say to yourself, I have prepared. This is excitement. Is it guaranteed to work? Again, nothing that I say comes with a guarantee. But these are just ideas that I want to pass on to you guys. So I mentioned some strategies. So we're, we're going to end this with a bit of like strategies for when it actually comes to doing things like the contest. And and I, I'm, I'm always vague when I say this contest because I'm, I'm secretly talking about exams and other types of tests. I'm trying to transcend just what's happening here. So, okay, what are some, some strategies? Okay, well, you know, strategies kind of, I could list a thousand things, but let, let's be small, like list a few things. So let's start, you know, what, what does science tell us? Um, okay, some strategies told, us, told to us by science. Uh, this stress reappraisal that I just talked about, right? Um, you're in there, you're, you're, you're writing, you're playing the big game, you're about to sing karaoke, just think that this is excitement. These feelings are about joy and happiness within you. Something that we've all heard and loved is sleep. You know, it's just how it is. Resting your body is ready to go and fight. Um, maybe a less obvious one that I, I do want to touch on a little bit in importance is social support. That is to say, being in a group of like-minded individuals and exchanging encouragement. When I think about being in my undergraduate time, I had a group of friends that were all in the same math and physics program as me, and we dealt with some very difficult courses. And to this day, I don't know like how I did it, but it's it's not how I did it. It's how it's I don't know how I could have done it without them. You know, being together with people with a similar goals. You know, like perhaps you you all at your schools or in whatever groups. I don't entirely know how the contest gets organized region to, to region. You know, if there are are people that are also doing this, you know speak with them, chat with them, encourage each other. That camaraderie really goes a long way in making you feel better. Um, okay, but these are things that are told by science. Um, so I've talked about, talked about just now my friends uh, in my various courses, classes, degree programs, and uh, I decided I would share with you some strategies that they had. I reached out to them and said, what strategies did you employ before writing a big test or so um, that I could sh pass on to these students. And, uh, well, my, my one friend, um, she is all about taking a jog beforehand. And this ties in a little bit to the stress reappraisal, right? You go for a jog, the heart's pumping, everything's beating, but it's, it's, it's not about beating and being crazy from anxiety. It's about like, yeah, running's fun. Uh, she also liked to be late to things, which is why she ran a lot. Um, another strategy from a different friend of mine, um, whoop. before any test, any, any large assignment type thing, he would stand above the paper, chest up, and just feel though he was tall and superior, he stood over like he was Superman. And the point of that is, again, that's connecting to this growth mindset. He, he is believing that he is capable. He spent that time and that puffed up chest is, I have spent time, I am proud, and I will beat this. Um, the last kind of random strategy from a friend of mine, um, he, he would always just blast music in his headphones. He would turn it up really high, and he would get excited. He would he would listen to songs that got him pumped and ready. And in that sense, this, this blood pumping, the, the, the breathing, the heart rate, it's again, it's controlled. It's not coming from, oh my God, about to write this test, about to write this contest. It was like, oh, this song is so good. Yes, I of course do not encourage you to turn it up to the point of destruction, but you know, in a way where it gets into your head and you're in that moment. So, so these were just some um, strategies that my friends passed to me 
to pass to you. And I think honestly, before we're we're done, I think it's worthwhile, as I mentioned in the previous slide, this social support. You know, it's worthwhile to know, like, whoop, you know, what are strategies as told by you, right? We're a group of people here, or you are a group of people here, all about to to embark on this competition, who are again in roughly the same kind of positions um, in your life. At, approaching the same kinds of uh, challenges ahead. I encourage you, if you have strategies, if you there's something that you prefer to do before writing a big test that you are going to do before sitting down for this competition, I encourage you to share it for the others. I'll again, I'll wait like, like a minute, give people the opportunity to, if they so wish. I will say that personally, I really liked this strategy that my friend had of standing above the test. And when he told me that from second year forward, every time I had a test or something, I would just, I am better than you test. I am taller and stronger. I will defeat you. Uh, yeah. Practice super duper important thing, particularly having access to to past uh, uh, contests. Um, the fact that there are weekly challenge questions that that's dope. I would even argue coming to coming here is already just a a step in the right direction for things. Um, okay, I'm not gonna gonna like stranglehold you all for for too long. So that's that's the end of really all that I had to say. Um, yeah, this is a great one. No, no question is impossible. Every question has an answer, hopefully. Uh, most definitely. Um, to just wrap up, um, I did utilize some sources and such. So some of the sources from which I got pictures and statements. And for you guys, if you wish to learn a little bit more about what I have talked about, these are six links. Or sorry, not not links, but uh, these are six things that you can type into YouTube to see some of the videos that 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 has that was a part of like the collective knowledge of what I have. So everything before the colons are the name of the talk, and the post colon is the name of the channel that hosted the talk. Um, I'm gonna leave this slide up for the end. So that's the extent of what I wanted to talk about today. So if there are any questions or thoughts, things people want to share, by all means, message into the chat, unmute, say hello. And yes, I, I, I await. I, I, you know, I, I, I certainly hope that you feel better and more prepared. You know, I, again, as, as kind of like I stress at the beginning, it's not like I am some kind of pro at this. These are still things that I am learning and getting comfortable with. Even before this very moment, when I was scarfing down my grilled cheese before the talk, I was thinking to myself, "You are not anxious. You are excited. You are about to tell a bunch of students that anxiety can become excitement. You are excited." So it it worked for me. I hope. So yes, I will sit here. I will remind you again that if you want to jot down uh, these titles, are titles for some videos on YouTube, which were very helpful in their varying ways. And in, in like a minute or two's time, I will take that down and you will just be looking at, at me. Uh, you are very welcome. Um, and, uh, you know, the goal honestly was, is to try to encourage learning better. And I hope that, I really do hope that you guys take from this. I mean, I, I say this in a soft way as it's the end of it. If this does not help you with the competition, then that's, that's fine. I want, really am thinking about helping you going forward when it comes to things like 
truly handling your exams, handling stress in university, just handling stress in your life going forward. So I'm, I'm very, uh, very happy to have had uh, everyone here. Um, I will again still be here. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Perhaps somebody will give a time management one and, and uh, as to plan schedules better, but don't worry. Uh, it's totally understandable to, to uh, mess up timings from time to time. Um, th this is a fact that I do not know, unfortunately. So I'm going to take down, or okay, I'm going to leave this up for another like minute or, or two as I do not have. So yes. Hi, Chris. I'm just going to intervene for one second to explain to everyone that uh, tomorrow's webinar is not the same Zoom call. Just like today, I will send you an email with the Zoom code and Zoom information for tomorrow's webinar. And thanks, Wonderful. Chris, for the for the webinar. Wonderful. Um, okay. I'm. Uh, you know, still some time is, you know, still, there's still time. There's still people here. I'll sit and if someone wants to, again, throw a message, say hello or something, I I am here and, and willing. The video is being recorded. Um, how it is being uploaded and such, I am not 100% sure, but it will be. I believe uh, onto YouTube was said.